So Celestron have finally released the reducer for the 9 and a quarter SCT Edge HD, which is the one I shoot with most of the time when I'm not shooting with the Raza. I'm really excited to use this product. So I'm Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. <laughs> Before we get going, I should mention that this video is sponsored by Bintel. Bintel is the largest binocular telescope and camera and astronomy accessory shop in Australia. And I was really lucky to go down to Sydney and film a promotional video for their store, which I edited and produced, filmed, even wrote the music for myself. I'm just gonna show you that video. So what did you think? It's not big budget, I know, but I'm just a YouTuber. So here is my Celestron 9 and a quarter telescope. My first telescope was a Celestron 4SC. My second telescope was a 9 and a quarter inch SCT. And the reason for that was because I saw images of Chris Hadfield, the Canadian astronaut, installing one of these on the International Space Station. I don't know if you're watching through the overhead camera, but it's beautiful to see this telescope up here. And I thought, if NASA is spending that kind of money on consumer-grade equipment and getting it into orbit, well, that's pretty much good enough for me then. I didn't know what I was doing, but I was so happy that I got this particular one. The first one I got was not the Edge HD model. It was the standard. And it didn't have the fast star support up the front. So I ended up trading in that one and buying this one brand new. The Edge HD means that it basically has a built-in field flattener, so it's better for astrophotography and the corners will be sharper from edge to edge. Uh, you will experience some coma otherwise on the corners. This has that correction built in. It has a couple of other features like the ventilation and the mirror locks at the back. But what I really like about it is the focal length. At this size, it's just big enough that you can take it around and move it portably if you want to, go to a star party or whatnot. You only need yourself to get it on and off the mount. The other thing is, is how versatile it is. Uh, with the fast star support, that means you can attach a hyperstar reducer at the front, which brings it down to F2. Its native focal length with no reducers and no magnifiers is 2,350 millimeters. Which is a pretty long lens, really. So it's great for lunar work. It's great for planetary work. It's not as good as like a 14 inch or something like that, but the 14 inch isn't as versatile when you're doing the wide field nebula stuff. So you've got the choice. You can put on the F2 reducer. You can leave it at its native. You can put on a bar lower magnifier to get an even tighter field of view on planets and really small stuff. Or you've also had the option to go for the 6.3 reducer, which is made by a third party. It's called the Lepus 6.3 reducer. However, Celestron have just released their 0.7x reducer, which is basically taking that 2350 number and timesing it by 0.7, and you get 70% of that focal length, but it reduces the F number down to F7. And I haven't used that specific field of view before, so I've gone ahead and I've done some tests. Now the weather hasn't been amazing. So my first light was a little hazy. However, I did get to test the new field of view and I'm gonna go out as soon as I can and just keep going on this target because it's beautiful. So let's check out this reducer. The long awaited 0.7X reducer, which basically means you're timesing it by 70%. 70% the F number, 70% the focal length. Wow, so this is a really solid construction compared to the Lepus 6.3 I've been using. The more glass the better. Wow, look at this thing. <laughs> Instructions. Nobody reads the... In 
Okay, I think I'm going to need to read the instructions. In fact, the bit that I need to know is right here. It's got quite a wide thread, so that was a bit confusing as to what was going to attach to that, but it turns out you do need a T adapter and a T mount before going to the rest of your optical train. So I'm going to get that gear together and see if I can make it work. So the image I got last night was scuttled by clouds, but that's okay because I took 10 images, stacked them, and it was pretty obvious that there's an issue with coma. But I don't think this is the reducer. I think that this might be the filter wheel up here, causing this vignetting on the edges. You know what they say though, astrophotography is a marathon, not a sprint. So I'm gonna reconfigure this and then try again tonight if the weather holds and see if we have better luck. So that's where the filter wheel was sitting. Um, not perfectly center and that's probably why the vignetting was off center a little bit, but it's still not ideal. So this is probably why you would want a uh, two inch filter wheel. If your camera sensor is too big, then the camera chip's corners are hitting these edges of the circle. Night number two is looking better. Uh, we don't have the severe vignetting that was introduced by the filter wheel. There is a little bit of drop off at the edges, which you can fix with flats or with some dynamic background extraction or just some manual tweaking in Photoshop to get rid of that gradient on the edges. Also, I had a little dust on the first night's work. You can see these lots of dusty dust motes around here. So I ended up going in and wiping the sensor, which you can do if you're careful. And I got rid of most of them, but introduced this one big one, which I'll have to deal with in post-processing. But as a review of the reducer, uh, you can see here it's got some slight vignetting on the edge, which is normal. That can easily be fixed in post-processing. As you can see, my stars are fine on one of the single exposures. So at the corners here, my stars are good. I'm happy with the way they look up there. Uh, on this corner, they seem to flare out a little bit in that direction and on this corner, they flare out a little bit in that direction and they seem mostly okay in this corner here. So that's similar performance uh, that I got out of the Leapers 6.3, however it was more severe with that one, so this one is definitely better. I was impressed that the reducer picked up this very faint, I call it the eyebrow, but this uh, this hydrogen shock wave out here. I forgot to mention, um, while I was imaging, on the first night I found one asteroid in my image. In this one I've got a bright asteroid flying through here. There's another one coming across the side here, which is a little, maybe a little too faint for you guys to see. There is another asteroid up here, flying across this star here. And there's another very bright one zipping up here. So I actually got four asteroids in the one image. It's a uh, traffic jam. So that's about it from me. I hope you enjoyed that video. Remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.